SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, or just coronavirus. No matter what you call it, you've probably heard a lot about it by now. But is what you've been hearing true, or is it false? And what's really important for you to know? I'm Dr. Wilson, and in this video I'll be debunking three broad myths concerning the coronavirus. So let's jump right into it. We're starting things off with this first myth, which is actually more of a conspiracy theory. Some people claim that the coronavirus causing the current pandemic was actually engineered or somehow escaped from a lab or otherwise artificially introduced into the population. These ideas are easily proven to be false. And the reason I'm addressing them is because if we don't understand where this coronavirus came from, then we won't be as prepared as we should in the future when it inevitably happens again. Let me explain. Whenever a new virus emerges to cause disease in humans, it's a good bet that that virus came from an animal. Viruses, bacteria, and other disease-causing pathogens have made the jump from their animal host to humans for as long as human history. And this coronavirus originated in bats before jumping to humans to cause the current pandemic. We knew this back in 2003, when the first SARS outbreak occurred which was also caused from a coronavirus that jumped from a bat to humans. Ever since then, scientists have been studying coronaviruses by capturing bats and isolating those viruses from the bats in order to study their genetic code. The genetic codes uncovered by these kinds of studies are exactly what allows us to determine whether or not the current coronavirus outbreak was caused by a virus that was engineered in a lab. Here's a paper on the origins of the new coronavirus published just this February by Chinese scientists. Because we can isolate the virus from infected patients and sequence its genetic code, we can then take that genetic code and place it in a family tree among other coronaviruses that have been discovered in bats throughout the years. You can think of this as kind of a 23andMe or Ancestry.com for coronaviruses. These researchers found that the human 2019 NCOV, or COVID-19, the coronavirus causing the current outbreak, is actually most closely similar to two coronaviruses isolated from wild bats in both 2015 and 2017. So from this data we can conclude that the coronavirus evolved from other coronaviruses that naturally reside in wild bats in China. We can also look directly at the coronavirus's genetic code, and if it were engineered artificially in a lab, then we would see footprints of that. We would see evidence of any manipulation that might have been done and we don't see that. There are lots of scientific papers that examine the evolution and the origins of the current coronavirus, and I'll put the links to those papers in the description below. Now, you might be asking if a coronavirus that closely resembles the one causing the current pandemic was isolated from bats in both years 2015 and 2017, then what's special about now? Why did the virus wait until now in order to jump to humans and cause disease? Well, in order for a virus to make the jump from an animal to a human, it has to be presented with sufficient opportunity in order to do so. All throughout history and all around the world, humans have provided many opportunities for these viruses to make that jump. And those opportunities present themselves in many different ways. But when it comes to this coronavirus, the most important opportunity that we think is necessary for it to make the jump from bats to humans comes in the form of what we call an amplifier host. What this means is that normally coronaviruses reside in bats and don't efficiently infect humans, but if they are able to infect an intermediate or an amplifier host first, then they have a much easier time infecting humans. For example, the 2003 SARS outbreak was thought to have happened when a coronavirus from a bat made the jump to a palm civet, which is this weird cat raccoon looking thing, and then from that palm civet to a human. Now, we're not really sure if the current coronavirus outbreak needed an amplifier host or what that amplifier host might be, but the reason I'm talking about this is because that the opportunity for a coronavirus to jump from a bat to another animal to a human is readily available in Chinese wet markets where wild animals are sold live, side by side. So given the fact that we know the coronavirus's genome and can place it within a family tree and track its origin, and the other fact that the opportunity for this virus to make the natural jump from bats to another animal to humans 
is readily available within Chinese food markets, we can conclusively say that this virus was not engineered in a lab whatsoever. There are many different strains of coronaviruses that have been isolated from bats throughout the years. So really, it's only a question of when will the next outbreak happen, not if. If we fail to learn our lesson from this current outbreak and continue to deny the fact that it came from natural sources and not artificial lab sources, then we are not prepared for the next outbreak. Okay, so that's one myth down. Let's leave the world of conspiracy for the rest of the video and talk about some more general myths. Now, depending on what you've seen from the media, you might be really panicked about this virus. You might think that it's going to kill us all, or that it might kill you, or something along those lines that is giving you a lot of anxiety. Let me be clear. This virus is very, very serious, and we should all be worried about it. But if you are a young, healthy individual, you can kind of breathe a sigh of relief if you're worried about this virus actually killing you because it seems to be most dangerous for the elderly. We probably won't actually know how deadly this virus really is until months or maybe even years from now. But due to the testing situations in various countries, we can estimate that it's probably going to fall between one and 2%. That might sound low, but that doesn't mean you don't have to worry about it because even if you're healthy and not likely to die from it, you are still likely to contract it and then pass it on to people who might actually die from it. On top of that, even if you're healthy and you catch this virus, you run the risk of landing yourself in the hospital. And you, if you're in the US, you probably don't want that hospital bill. Overall, if the media is instilling the belief in you that this virus is something to completely panic about, then that is an absolute myth. You should not be panicking about this virus, but you should be taking it seriously. You should be taking the necessary precautions that are advised to us by our health officials. These recommendations include washing your hands regularly with soap and water and practicing social distancing, which means avoiding large social gatherings and working from home as much as possible. So yes, I'm sorry, but this means that canceling of sports events and concerts is the right decision in this context. So if you're a young, healthy individual, don't go out and panic by toilet paper and food. Just listen to health officials and make the necessary plans for yourself in order to stay home as much as possible over the next few weeks or months. This third and final myth is the polar opposite of myth number two. It's just the flu, bro. It's not a big deal. This is also misleading and false. So a lot of people like to compare this coronavirus to the flu in an attempt to say that it's not that big of a deal. But in reality, the coronavirus is actually many times deadlier than the flu. This is for multiple reasons. Number one is that we don't have a vaccine against the coronavirus like we do against the flu. Number two is that we don't have any approved treatments. For example, with the flu, we have a treatment called Tamiflu. But for the coronavirus, there is no known equivalent. These are the factors that are contributing to that estimated 1-2% to death rate for the coronavirus that I mentioned earlier. If that still sounds low to you, then consider this. The number of people confirmed to be infected with coronavirus is growing really, really fast, practically exponentially. As the virus spreads worldwide, more and more people are going to become infected. Let's say by the end of this, a total of 700,000 people become infected with coronavirus. If we assume a death rate of 1-2%, to that means anywhere from 70,000 to 140,000 people will end up dead because of this virus. And that kind of loss of life is nothing that we should just shrug off. Furthermore, that 700,000 figure that I mentioned is just made up. For all we know at this point, this virus could end up infecting upwards of a billion people in which case the death toll would fall in the millions. This is exactly why drastic action is necessary at a time like this. Doing things like canceling large public gatherings, schools, and even cities going on lockdown is what we need to do in order to slow the progression of this virus and ease the burden on our healthcare systems 
and our economy. Ideally, the whole world will take this seriously and adhere to these guidelines in order to prevent the spread of this virus. And then, once these drastic measures have prevented disaster, the naysayers will be able to complain that we overreacted. So, in summary, the average person does not need to full-on panic about this virus. But if left unchecked, this virus could be one of the deadliest plagues in human history, which is why we need to take it so seriously. I'll leave all the links for the proper guidelines on how to exactly do that in the description. So that's three myths about the coronavirus debunked. I'm Dr. Wilson, and I'll see you next time.